The prophet says, the prophet speaking for God says, I'm about to do something new. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? Can you not see? Can you not hear? Something new is happening, the prophet says. And I mean radically new. You remember when cars were a new thing? Well, that's a bit before, that's before, before all our times, but those, those, those heat traps back then with the crank motors, forget all that. These, we have new, all digital, sm smart sensor, self-driving cars that are gonna blow you away. Remember when TVs were a new thing? I bet some of you actually do remember this. Do you remember when TVs were a new thing? Those little black and white, we had one at my grandpa's house, one of those little black and white screens inside the really big box. Forget all of that. These new 4K, high dynamic resolution, wide color gamut screens are gonna knock your socks off. Remember when computers were a new thing? I mean, sure, not, not, not the multi-ton, mega-room, multi-room computers that NASA had back in the day, but the personal computers. Remember when personal computers were a new thing? My mom bought a Windows 3.1 Acer that had a backbone of DOS. The computer was so primitive, she had to type everything in by command prompt. And I remember sitting there for hours watching as she typed commands and learned how to do this brand new green screen computer. Well, forget all that. Computers so, are so amazing right now, you don't even call them computers. They are mobile devices. Remember when God rescued our ancestors? Remember the burning bush and all the plagues that he sent upon Egypt until he got Pharaoh to truly release us and then parting the water and bringing us through the wilderness, the mountain, the manna, the water from the rock, the pillar of fire and cloud. You remember all that? God says, well, forget all that. I'm about to do something new. Now it happens. Now it is springing forth, and it's going to be so amazing. You're going to forget about the past because it simply won't compare to what I'm doing now. Can you not see? Can you not hear? Paul knew it was important. Paul, in his letters, he says, well, you know, I was descended directly from Charlemagne himself. He doesn't say it that way, but you know. He says he was an Eagle Scout. He was homecoming king. He was student body president. He graduated from an Ivy League college. He served in the military, went out to deploy, served as a volunteer firefighter. He's been a lifelong Christian, baptized since birth, going through confirmation multiple times so he could deepen his faith and prove that his public affirmation was by choice and not by force. He served as president of his congregation council, town, township supervisor, head of school, board coach of multiple youth sports. And then St. Paul met Jesus. And suddenly all that didn't matter anymore. Not that he stopped doing the good things. But he no longer judged his value and his worth based on all of his achievements. Now there's only one thing he puts on his resume faith in Christ and the righteousness of God that comes through that faith. God is doing something new in the world. And for Paul, this is all that matters. Can you not see it? Can you not hear it? Mary walks into the room. I mean, no surprise, it's her house. She should be there, right? And she's carrying an unusual jar. Inside this jar is pure nard perfume, which is something amazing. Because we're in Israel in the first century, and nard comes from the Himalayas. Think of how far this perfume had to travel just to get here. And you can imagine what imported perfume from the Himalayan mountains would cost. Judas claims the perfume was worth 300 denarii. In the other Gospels, we get that same line, 300 denarii. One denarius was what a laborer received as a usual daily wage. So let's assume minimum wage. Eight hours a day, 300 days, a year's salary. This bottle of perfume cost at least $17,400 
And that's assuming minimum wage. Let's assume mine or your daily wage. None of all of us work at minimum wage. A number of us work higher than minimum wage. If you work higher than minimum wage, think of your annual salary, okay? This bottle of perfume costs your annual salary. And so Judas complains, why wasn't this perfume sold and the proceeds given to the poor? Judas John throws in a side note about Judas being a thief, but I gotta say, that doesn't change the validity of his point. What a waste. You poured out 17,000... Nope, those two aren't going to work either. I'll get a moment. Jesus throws in a side note about Judas being a thief. Honestly, $17,000 poured out in one second? Wouldn't you complain too? Seven, I do still need that. $17,000 poured out in one second? I mean, seriously, have you ever done that? I mean, I would not have done that. Judas stands in line with the Old Testament law. Deuteronomy 15 is one of those beautiful chapters in the law. And yeah, the law can be beautiful. Go read it. It promises that there will be no one in need among you because the Lord is sure to bless you. But if there happens to be anyone in need among you, do not be hard-hearted or tight-fisted toward your neighbor. Rather, open your hand, lending willingly and giving generally. And this point is so important, it bears repeating. Therefore, I command you, says the Lord, open your hand. Why should you open your hand? Because the Lord has blessed you with enough that there needed to be anyone in need throughout the country. So if there is, that means someone's managed to hoard God's blessings. It also means that God has shared blessings with you, and you now have the opportunity to share them with others. This is what we call stewardship. And Mary has the means to share some blessings. And so Judas Jesus tells Judas to leave her alone. Today isn't a day for an extravagance. Can you not see? Can you not hear? Less than a month ago, Lazarus was dead. And I don't mean asleep or dying or not quite dead or on life support. I mean dead, dead. Buried, six feet under, four days dead. And then Jesus asks us to dig Lazarus up again. Why would you want to do that? The only thing you're going to find down there is a corp and a stench that would kill the living. Wouldn't you rather we spray you with a skunk? That'd be easier. But Jesus insists. And the next thing we know, Lazarus is standing there beside him alive and well. And in joy, Mary thinks today when Jesus is back at her house, I want this house to smell like the joy of seeing Lazarus again. I want Jesus to smell like the joy that he's given back to me because my brother who was dead is now alive. My brother who was lost is now found. And this house has got to smell like that joy. Can you not see Can you not hear the new thing that Jesus is doing? Something that people have never even heard of. In the Old Testament, men rule. Adam was the first created. Noah saved humanity. God became known as the God of the patriarchs, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Moses saved the people. Joshua led them to a new land. All the judges, save one, were men. All the rulers of Israel were men. There's a mention of a few women prophets, but all the books of the prophets that we have today were written by men. And even now, Jesus' primary disciples are all all men. I mean, yeah, there are some women in the group, but the 12, the 12, they are men. And then Mary arrives on the scene, and she takes off her head covering, radical in Middle Eastern culture, and uses her hair to wipe the perfume that she has just poured onto Jesus' feet. 
And in Matthew's gospel, Jesus says, wherever the good news is proclaimed throughout the world, what she's done today will be told in remembrance of her. The good news, that's something worth sharing that people haven't heard of yet, something that hasn't happened before. Everything new is beginning in this moment with her pouring this oil on Jesus' head and on Jesus' feet and anointing him and wiping them with her hair. It's beginning something new. Can you not see? Can you not hear? There hasn't been a king in Israel for over 600 years. There's only been a handful of descendants, decent kings since David was king, and that was nearly a thousand years ago. Into the room today walks Mary. And she's got oil for anointing. And she anoints Jesus. She does what the prophets or the priests used to do. And she does it for the first time in over half a millennium. She anoints Jesus and names him king. It's this act that begins Holy Week. The next day in John's Gospel is when Jesus enters Jerusalem and the people shout, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. What Mary just does today changes everything. Can you not see? Can you not hear? Can you not smell? Everything has changed. Everything we thought was important, all those important stories, all the important things we've accomplished in our lives, all the important stuff we own, everything we thought has, was valuable, it has become worthless on its own. And that's the key. It's not that my education or my family history or my big screen TV is necessarily worthless, but they are worthless on their own. Can you not see? Can you not hear? The value of everything has changed by, has changed, the value of everything has changed. It is now defined by their participation in this moment, in this person, in this act of love and passion and death and resurrection. This is now the defining point of value in the world. Jesus redefined what is important to Paul. Jesus rewrote what value is for Mary. Jesus created wealth that can't be measured in dollars or cents. On the cross, Jesus will take all that and give it away for free. And the question each of us face this Lent as it comes to an end, as we get ready for those holy days and for that big celebration of Easter, are you ready to receive the most valuable thing in the history of the world? Are you ready to join Paul and Mary, Martha and Lazarus, Peter and Andrew, and receive the joyful and extravagant love of God? Holy Week is upon us, and God is going to give away the most valuable thing God owns. His own son, his very self, for you and for me. Can you not see? Can you not hear? Can you not smell? Are you ready to receive Christ's love? Amen. Amen.